still have not got that uh, ending right, have I? The music. <laughs> uh, let me just make sure my sound's okay. There we go. Just touch that up a little bit. Good afternoon, uh, East Coast of North America, Canada, US. Uh, good evening to those of you in the UK and Europe. And what is it? Is it good morning? Is it very early in the morning for New Zealand, Australia? And whatever time it is where you are, whether you're joining us live or whether it's on the recording. We are at the moment going through a book called, um, let me just make sure I get this right. So I have to just take it, whoops, I have to just take it off my stand. And uh, let me just show it you. Uh, let's take that number off as well, uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. Divine Romance, 365 days. I wonder if I can give you some light on that. Um, 365 days of meditating on the Song of Songs. Now, we started this um, series of uh, meditation. We started this meditation uh when did we start it? January, wasn't it? Where are we now? We're in May. No, no, it wasn't January. Uh, anyway, we started it this year, so we're not we're not really in sync with the uh, with the dates on the top of the page. But that doesn't really matter if we just take it as day one, day two, and so on. But we're in Song of Songs, and we're in chapter one, verse seven. And right at the very beginning, we did an introduction saying that if you took time to meditate on this book, that it would lay a foundation in you. Uh, not only lay a foundation, and because of that foundation, it would, it would build a confidence in you, and it would develop how you see uh, God, your outlook on God, your concept of him, your, the lens that you look through. And oftentimes that lens is dependent on, uh, you know, your upbringing, your culture. Uh, if you've got a church life, you know, before, um, you, you know, you were raised in church and depending on the denomination you were raised in, will all influence that lens that you're looking through. But in these studies, well, not studies, in these meditations, um, I'm believing God that, he will just open your eyes to see fresh his love and uh, how much he loves us. And you'll get a different view of God. Uh, that's uh, not only get a different view of God, but you'll have a, uh, um, an insight into your own destiny and, you know, how much he loves you and, you know, that personal relationship with him. Yeah, I seem to be uh, dinging and donging today, trying to get this um, uh, flow. <laughs> Let's go and say hello to a few people and um, see who we've got on today. Uh, Emma Harvey was the first one I'm from Scotland. Now, this morning, Emma, we went for a walk. Not you and I, but um, in the morning, Ramblings, we went for a walk. Uh, it was raining. I had my brolly, my umbrella up. And I don't know how the reading turned out sound-wise, but uh, it was just good to get out into the green uh, greenery and just listen to the birds. Uh, so I don't know what the weather's like in Scotland, because you tend to get, when we get the rain, you tend to get dry, dry weather. Margie, Margie Hogg, good morning, Margie. Everyone joining you live, and everyone joining, joining you live from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Always tickles me, that mark. Tickles me the name, Broken Arrow. Uh, Christine Robinson, hello from Barry, Ontario. Um, I, I was going to say something. And hang, hang on, Christine. Just let me just go back to Margie a minute. I was going to say something about. I I need to look up the meaning of a broken arrow. Uh, I don't know if that's a broken covenant or. Do you know what it means, Mark? If if you do, if you could just put tell us in the comments, it'd be very interesting. Uh, Christine from my old hunting ground. Um, we did some meetings there two years ago with Zach in Barry, 
Ontario. And I said to Jean, those meetings were the closest I've got to the feeling, you know, and the emotional and the sense of God's presence that we got in 94. And that was two years ago. So I'm, we're looking forward to perhaps uh, coming back to Barry later this year. Um, Kimo, good evening. Afternoon was nice. It's nice here, Kimo. It's tidied up. I was looking on the news. I see that uh, uh, Finland's becoming or applying to become part of NATO along with Sweden. And I know our Prime Minister made some comments today about uh, signing an agreement. Anyway, very interesting. Very interesting. Madeline Kirby, good afternoon from Florida. Nice weather today. When you say nice weather, Madeline, because you get nice weather all the time. I know some days you get cloudy days, but do you mean it wasn't um, humid? Uh, anyway, I, <laughs> that's a question. I don't, but I don't, anyway, Gail Ann, same from uh, Florida. Good noon from Florida. Many blessings to you all. Uh, good noon to you, Gail. Now, let me just scroll this up a little bit. Joe, Joe Costello, good day. God bless all. You know, Joe, we passed the field this morning uh, on the uh, walk. And it had a, I don't know if you were on this morning or got the recording, but it just reminded me of Mary in the last place where you were uh, cutting grass. Uh, but he was, on a, he was on one of these mowers, you know, one of these tractors that had a mower behind it. Uh, Oh, there you are, Mary. Mary Costello. Shalom, everyone from Pennsylvania. By the way, that's uh, Joe's wife. Just as I was just telling Joe, Mary, just reminded me of you and cutting grass. I'll always think of you now. When I think of your name, that picture of you cutting grass will always come up. Uh, something about cutting grass, though, isn't it? It's uh, very relaxing. I, I uh, cut my lawn uh, on Monday while Jean was out. Uh, Joyce, Joyce Stencil, good afternoon. Uh, you loved the walk this morning. <laughs> it was a last minute decision, Joyce. It was pouring with rain and I just felt I needed the exercise. And do you know when I got to the end of that uh, walk, you know, we were talking about we're going to go in the, in the uh, grocery store there and have breakfast. When I got in there, they'd closed the restaurant. <laughs> I don't know whether that's because of all the uh, lockdown stuff, but they never opened it again, so I never got my breakfast there. But Debbie set out to pick me up. I didn't know, and then realised that there was no uh, no restaurant. Uh, let's see, who else do we have on? Linda, good noon day from a very warm and sunny Indiana. It makes a, it makes a change. Actually, Linda, it's sunny here outside now. Uh, the rain is gone. I can see clearly now. The rain has gone. <laughs> good noon day to you, Lynn. Um, Susan Simpson, good evening from Bolton, Cumbria. Cumbria. <laughs> uh, good evening to you, Sue. Uh, Doug, Doug Ferrin, uh, resident weatherman, good noon hour from Bramford, Ontario, Canada. Blessing, sunny and warm, 22 centigrade. Uh, uh, Debbie's in the car. What's new, Deb? I think, you know, you should sell your house and buy a uh, motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would suit you. I really think that would suit you. Um, Kimo. The morning walk was good. I enjoyed very much. Uh, you mean you went on the morning walk as well, Kimo? Or was it just in your head? <laughs> Luan Wyman, blessings from Nebraska. Blessings to you, Luan. Uh, Doug, I'm going to send Debbie Sachs' email contact. He's in favour of setting up a date. Oh, that would be great. I want to do it this year, Lord willing, Doug. Um, and we've got to plan it now, really. Uh, you know, it's been a bit of a headache because Canada is still, I think, in some, you know, still a lot of paperwork to enter in there with the COVID stuff. Uh, although here now, it's like we never had COVID. You know, <laughs> Anyway, that's another story. But Emma Harvey, sunshine and scattered showers today. Yeah, same here. Gail Ann, 81 Fahrenheit, 
43% humidity. That's a nice day in Florida. Wow. <laughs> uh, now, what are you saying, Bobs? Uh, <laughs> sorry, Bob, I was just seeing Debbie's uh, comments. Um, lost you on Facebook, but here now. Oh, I wonder why. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's the technology, isn't it, Bob? You know, as older generation, we struggle with it. But anyway, you're back, you're back. Uh, good evening to you, Barbara. Uh, Debbie Beck, I'm waiting for my inheritance to buy a motorhome. <laughs> Just kidding. I was thinking, Deb, of selling the house and your mum and I, you know, going on a world cruise and, um, you know, spend the inheritance, spend your kids' inheritance. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, there you go. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Let's not, let's not go down that route. Um... Our theme today is shepherd. Uh, I love this. I love these one-liners in this devotional. I don't know about you, and I keep saying it, but I've been really blessed. Um, I've been really blessed by this reading um, and these meditations in the Song of Songs, Shepherd. And uh, the short reading from the verses, well, let me read the verse to you first. Um, let me see, I've got to look out. No, I'll read the line to you. Uh, where do you lead your beloved one to rest in the heat of the day? Now, ESV puts it a different way, and I don't know whether I can find this without messing up my stuff, but um, let me just see if I can find it for you. Uh I gotta get ding dong boing here in a hole. Now, I have, I'm going into my app, um, and if I go into the history side of it, yeah, there it goes. It comes up with, uh, let me show you this. I think it's number three, yeah. Um, have I got the right one now? We're on verse seven, aren't you? There you go, second uh, column. Tell me, you whom my soul loves, where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down. Now, in the Passion Translation, it says, where do you lead your beloved one to rest in the heat of the day? Um, very interesting, the word shepherd. Um, but... Uh, before I go there, before we look at that, I just want to answer a question that um, uh, I got an email and um, she asked me about Raquel, uh, Rakam, Rakam, the word, the Hebrew word for love. And I just want to show you how that's spelled in case you, you're watching. Um, now, let me see. I've got to go to Ding Dong going a boing and a hey and a ho. <laughs> there you go. Now, let me just put that light up. Right, this is how you spell rock'em. Do you remember we were talking about the word for love? That when they translated the Bible, although the translators were, you know, diligent and a lot in prayer, you know, when we're dealing with the word of God, we're dealing with, uh, what the early scribes believe is a spiritual language, an eternal language. And you will never, never come to the end of his uh, depths. You'll never come to the end of his word because it's an eternal word. It has no beginning, it has no end. So when he speaks a word, he speaks something of himself. And this word, rakam, uh, let me just spell it out for you. Just bear with me, because I'm just uh, trying to get in the flow here. Um, it's not the one I want, it's this one. There you go. This word, Rackham, it's spelt in English this way. Let 
Let's make sure I get this right. Start with a reach. Which is 200. A cat. Which is 8. And a closed man. Which is 40. Now I never count the noughts here. It's 12, it's 14. And 14 represents salvation. And if I was to take the 14, do a 1 plus 4 equals 5, which is this letter here. And for me, it's a covenant letter. It's the breath of God. Um, it's the letter he put in Abraham and uh, Sarah, uh, Sarai's name to, to change her name to Sarah. He took the two uh, letters. Let me just write this. I don't know if you can still see this. He took a yard. I just got to make sure I got the spelling right on this. Six, five, ten, yeah, twenty-six, which is the name, the sacred name of God, which is Yah. Yahweh. Um, so we took these two Hayes, yeah. And Abraham became Abraham. And Sarah, well, I'd, I'll just write it in the English here. Uh, she had an AH, I think, on the end. It was the ability. God took something of himself, took the breath of God, and we're talking about Song of Songs and the kiss. The kiss of God is the breath of God into us, which brings life. Yeah? It brings life. So when we look at this word, let me just come back up here to Rakam. And we say it means salvation. And grace, really, because if I take the numbers 14, 1 plus 4, it's the number of grace. And, and that's the hallmark of salvation. I was saying to Jean uh, this afternoon, Jean and I were talking, um, I don't realise how, you know, what a privilege it is when God gives you a partner uh, to be able to talk to and, and have a soundboard. And I was telling her about when I first got into the Hebrew stuff and began to study the coach. Do you know, first of all, I realized that God was fulfilling a calling in me uh, that went back uh, to when I was 18. I'm now 74. That went back to when I was 18. In fact, when I started to get into the to the codes and the pictures of the letters, it brought me into a deeper intimacy with God. But uh, it also revealed to me what my destiny was, what my assignment was. And, you know, I've always had this desire. You know, if I hadn't become a Christian, if I hadn't got the calling of God on my life, uh, I think I would have either gone into studying archaeology. I loved history when I was a kid. Uh, it's all part of the makeup. And I'll guarantee if I go back into my bloodline that there will be some of my forefathers there that had the same uh, you know, desire, in a, in a sense that you're fulfilling 
your bloodline, your destiny of your bloodline. Um, so when I got into the letters, I began to realise that, you know, because I was called, because I was separated, you know, God separated me and called me, you know, not only to be saved, but called me uh, to teach and uh, to preach and, you know, whatever, it how it manifested itself. The bottom line was he gave me a love for his word. He gave me a love for his word and, a, and an inquiring mind to want to research it and to dig up. And so then when I first got drunk in the spirit and people couldn't realize, well, what's the point of all of this, John? What is the point of all this silliness as they saw it in their eyes? It really was fulfilling. You know, that Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 4, he brought me into his house of wine. And it's only as you get intoxicated with him, you know, you cannot receive the deep things of the Spirit of God with a natural mind. You cannot do it with an academic trying to work it out and study it. It has to come from revelation. It has to come from a deep desire and a love for God. And that comes out of that personal relationship. I know I keep hitting on about this, but this is what the Song of Songs is all about. It's about a relationship of a bride and her bridegroom. And it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor of the church, the called out ones, you and I, and her beloved. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I was telling you, I was sharing with Jean. The funny thing is, you know, I've been married 51 years. 51 years married. Um, I spent a lot of time traveling. And Jean would travel with me for a third of the time. And I, in the, just before the lockdown came uh, and the COVID stuff, I was not complaining to God, but I was saying to God, you know, Lord, I'm spending half of my life away, you know, from my wife, uh, you know, because she can't always be with me and uh, and it's time I can't get back. But do you know that God can give you back time? Because he doesn't dwell in time. Do you know he can give you back what you've lost? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt, oh God, I wish... You know, I've wasted, not, well, not, I don't, I'm not using that word wasted uh, for myself though, when I say about, you know, the call to God, to the gospel and having to spend a lot of weeks and months, you know, away from each other, from Jean and I, you know. Uh, I'm not saying that was wasted, that was a call, but you know what God has given it me back? He restores to you what you consider wasted years. He can restore it back to you. But my point is this. You know, I've been married 51 years. And this whole book of Song of Songs really is about the bride and the bridegroom. It's all about, about Ephesians 5, verse 26. About, you know, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. And yet we've taken it in some ways, you know, to hit one another, you know, the male and the female and ding dong and boing and hey and ho and our differences. But... It's a metaphor of the love of the church, the love of the bridegroom to her to his church. Isn't that wonderful? But I'm coming back to this point, you know, talking about with Jean for uh, 51 years. And so uh, since the um, COVID and the lockdown kicked in, I can't keep up with the years now, but it's two years ago, isn't it? When when it kicked in, everything stopped. Everything changed. I couldn't travel. In fact, Vine Press was born out of that. Vine Press, what we know now and what I'm doing now, was born out of that. You know, and somebody thanked me that they said, oh, it was such a blessing during the lockdown to have the devotionals every morning. 
Um, but I'm coming back to this point of the bride and the bridegroom. Do you know, I've, 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 I've been home now. I've only traveled once in two years. You know, two years ago, my last two years, just over two years ago, my last uh, meeting of my traveling was I went to Belgium and that was my last trip and I came home. And then the, then the lockdown happened. And I've spent two years now mainly sitting in front of a camera or out in the garden. And God has completely changed, you know, the way I operate, completely changed it, right? But coming back, I'm trying to get to this point. Do forgive me. I'm trying to get to this point. Um, what I'm saying about the bride and the groom and the bridegroom was I've had two years home now which has been great. I've really enjoyed it. I mean, sometimes I get a bit of cabin fever, but I've really enjoyed it. What have I enjoyed? I've enjoyed that I've had time with Jean, you know. And we tend to, we were laughing uh, when we had Margaret round yesterday, uh, an old friend of Jean's. In our house, you know, in our living room, we have a, uh, what we call a couch, three-seater couch on one side, like an L shape, but it, they're not joined. You know what I mean? We have one three seater at one side, and then at the other bottom of the L, we have a two seater. And I usually sit in the two seater, and it has those, you know, where the the uh, footrest comes up, and the same for. And Jean sits on the opposite, and we talk to one another. And uh, do you know what? <laughs> this sounds strange, but <laughs> I. There were times, you know, because this is the most, you know, this is the most that we've had together in a sense in our 51 years because we've done a lot of traveling and sometimes I've traveled on my own. But this is the most consistent time we've had together. And I'll be talking to her. And you know what? I know what she's thinking. There's times I could just read a mind. I, I said, Jean, I can read your mind. I know what you're thinking. I know, you know, we'd have a conversation and she would, there would be a gap and I knew what she was thinking. Why? Because of that union. Do you understand? It's almost like, well, we have. We've become one in the 51 years. But I was saying to her today, to get to the point, I was saying to her today, <laughs> um, I, I was saying, you know, we're talking about the living letters and... Uh, I was in, where was I? I was in South Korea a few years ago. And I told her I was in a McDonald's and I was studying the letters. And um, I was studying about this monk called Mendel. And I said to Jean, do you know what, Jean? I looked at, I, I remember studying this guy, Mendel, and it was telling me that he used to study the structure of garden peas. He spent most of his time studying garden peas. And I thought to myself, what's he doing in a monastery studying peas? Shouldn't he be studying the word of God? But you know that the word of God is also displayed in creation. Romans 1 says that we are without excuse even if we've had a bad upbringing and not had a church upbringing, that there is placed within us that witness that when we see creation and the dawns, every dawn and every sunset is different and every snowflake is different, when we look at creation and we see the order of spring, summer, win autumn, winter, and how it comes in, the opportunities. And then Jean and I watch a program where they look back on a person's life and they, they, they go back through their generations and they can see, ah, that's why I like so-and-so. My great-great-grandfather liked that. Do you, do you understand what I mean? But coming back to this monk, I said, you know, Jean, when I got into the living letters, I began to realize that what this guy was studying 
was the numbers, was the coding of what we call DNA today and how blessed we are, how blessed we are, church, because DNA, since the discovery of DNA, and he was the father, this monk was the father of DNA, was known as the father, and other people built on his foundation, and we have an element, different elements of it, but now in crime scenes, they can tell by the DNA. And if you're an orphan and don't know who your parents are, and if there's a DNA, if they're listed in the DNA bank, they can tell you almost 99% sure that you belong to such and such, that they are your father, your paternal father. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, I don't know why I got off on that. I got off on that rant. Um, but... And that's the same with, with the letters. Now listen, listen quickly. I know I haven't gone anywhere near where I want to go, but when I began to study this word, shepherd, and it's the prayer, you know, tell me, you whom my soul loves, I'm reading it from the ESV verse 7 of Song of Songs, where you pasture your flock, and that word pasture means to make them, you ever have seen sheep get down on all fours? To make them lie down, to make them rest. Where do you pasture your flock? And this is my prayer. This has been my prayer over the years, over these last few years. Lord, where are you pasturing your flock? Where are those that love you? Where are those that are hungry for you? Where are those that are non-religious? and want a personal relationship with you? Where are those people that are not just serving you out of fear of hell and damnation, but are serving you because they love you and they don't want to break your heart? Where is that rock and love that has to feed back to God, who God needs our love? Isn't that wonderful? Of the almighty God, the eternal God, the everlasting God, the all-sustaining God should need you and I to love him and not love him out of a fear of hell or keeping the commandments. Or Do you, do you understand what I mean? Just to get your insurance policy and get your salvation and then live as you like. He's looking for a people. He's gathering sheep a flock that love him, that love him with that rack and love that cannot be described in English. Do you understand that? It cannot be described in English because it's an eternal word and we will spend eternity getting to know him. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I've been so blessed. I've been so blessed with these studies and, and the practicality of them. Anyway, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? So I, I had to do that because um, I'm trying to think, you know, our German sister. I, oh, forgive me. I, I, the name slips my mind. <laughs> Asked me, how do you spell Rackham? And I, I spelt it to her in English. And no, she said, how do you spell it in Hebrew? And so I, I looked up the word. It's, it's an Aramaic word, but it has, a, it has a twin word in Hebrew, which means it's spelt exactly the same. And it adds up to 14, which is salvation. And what is salvation? It's the love of God for you and I. God so loved you. God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him. And he wants to draw us into a love relationship. He wants a people that know him intimately, that know what he's thinking. We will never get to know everything he is thinking because... His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But we'll get glimpses of it. Like, And that's the reason I was telling you that about Jean and I, about me saying to her, I can read your mind, you. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, oh, God help us. God help us. Oh, dear me, dear me. Oh, I'm just going through your comments. Ah. Uh, I got lost there. What are you saying, Mary? Um, Debbie said it best. 
God doesn't work inside the constraints of created time. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it mind-blowing? Do you understand that? Do you understand he wants to draw you into a love relationship where you love him, where, you know, before you... Um, how can I put it? You served him out of fear. In other words, if I break his commandments, ooh, I don't want to get judged and go to hell. But now you serve him out of love and you don't want to break his heart. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, oh. Thank God we got into this study, into this meditation on the Song of Songs. Oh, thank God. Thank God. And coming back to that sheep, I'm trying to round this up and I'm a little bit all over the place, but um, show me, Lord, where you feed your flock. What am I saying? I want, I, Lord, I want to I wanna be with people that love you, not just religious people. And do you know something? You know, we're going to be doing this um, Hebrew, uh, you know, the letters and uh, the studies and stuff. And we've already put the dates down, but we haven't announced them yet. But uh, we're just waiting to get the textbooks sorted. And I'll have that sorted this week. I will. I already know, I think, what we're going to use. But I just want to double check it. And I'll be meeting with Debbie on Friday. But do you know that the ancient scribe said you should never study alone? That you should study with a partner or a group. Why? Because it's an eternal word. And God has a wonderful way of taking one word that means something to you, that means completely something different to me. You know, the perspective, not that I disagree with you, I just see it through a different lens. You see it through a different lens. And so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, what are you saying, Kimo? Uh, I have to love. Like be a friend, to be loved, to be a lover, an ally. Love can refer to friendship, familiar love, romantic love, covenant loyalty. I think that's what I'm looking for, Kimo. That love. Um, it doesn't come out clear that I can't, I can't see. Different types of love, isn't it? Different types of love. But this r Rackham love, there isn't an English word for it. It just means completing the circle, completing the love of God, re revaluing back your love for him. You know, people say, oh, you know, shouldn't you be studying instead of gardening? No, what I'm doing is I'm taking God's creation and I'm presenting it back to him. Do you, do you know what I mean? I, like the ten talents, I'm increasing it, its value, back to him. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. Okay. Okay. I've rambled on quite a bit, and we're well over time. And uh, I need to take you to the ding dong buying hay and a word, <laughs> and just read what it says, shepherd. Um, Stick with me here, and hopefully we may not get this. Let's go to it. Um, hopefully this will should take us closer. Yeah. Shepherd, where do you lead? Let me move this square thing here. Let me just move that, then you can see it clearer. Shepherd. Where do you lead your beloved one to rest in the heat of the day? I'm just trying to get that a little bit clearer. Jesus is our great shepherd, best friend, faithful king. He has our best interest at heart and desires to lead us on a beautiful journey. He is the path of wisdom and knows the best and safest route. He knows when we're tired and need to rest and when we must push through to overcome. Life is filled with hills and valleys, 
Sometimes, despite our best intentions, it feels as if we've lost our way. Disappointments, failures, thrust out the claws to trip us. But Jesus is there to catch us. During the most, during the darkest, most painful times, he is there. God wants you to succeed. Let me say that again. God wants you to succeed. He's cheering you on. Go and explore the path that leads you to your purpose. He's watching and when your heart is towards him, he will never let you wander too far. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord, sometimes it feels as if I'm aimlessly wandering, wandered in the wilderness. My feet are tired. My faith seems weak. I release my disappointments. Just release them right now. Fears, failures to you. I don't want to go my own way. I want you to lead me. You will bless me, provide for me, open doors that no one else can. You are the good shepherd and I trust you. Isn't that wonderful? I trust you. Oh, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wow. Well, <laughs> I've gone around the world today to get to where I want to get to. But you're so good. You're so, you're so wonderful, church. You're so gracious to me. Um, Kimo, I'll put that quote up on the end there that you've done on the Hebrew stuff. Um, now, Emma, I, I've lost the train of thought there. Where does it say that? That's so interesting. If you can uh, just expand on that maybe in an email to me, we maybe take it up another day. Uh, Margie Hogg, wonderful message today. Thank you for planting such good seeds. Amen, amen. God bless you, Margie. Okay, the Lord bless you, keep you, cause his wonderful face to shine upon you and grant you shalom, shalom. Now, I think I've got this outro right now. <laughs>